I'm Norman Wahlberger, and today we're going to have a look at pentagons and five-fold symmetry. Pentagons are rather special in the family of regular polygons. The triangle, the square, the hexagon, they all have very regular properties. They tessellate the plane. The pentagon is much more subtle and mysterious. And it's been a subject of intense interest and, in fact, mystical study from ancient times. Euclid and Ptolemy both gave con ruler and encompass constructions of the Pentagon. The one I'm going to show you is due to Richmond in 1893. We start with a circle and two perpendicular diameters of the circle. Then we bisect this segment here, so there's the midpoint, and we join this point to that midpoint, creating that line. And then we look at these two lines here, this di diameter and that line that we've just constructed, and we take the two bisectors of that vertex. So in green, one bisector there, and another one perpendicular to it, bisecting there. So that spread is the same as that spread, and that spread is the same as that spread. Where these two vertex bisectors meet the base diameter, we draw perpendicular lines up to meet the circle, creating four points. And with the original point, that creates a regular pentagon. Now associated to a pentagon, there are two really important spreads. They're very closely connected with the golden ratio, but in, from, from the point of view of rational trigonometry, they're in fact a little bit more fundamental. <coughs> I call them alpha and beta, and here they are geometrically. So, here's our pentagon as before, and the spread subtended at the center by a side, and that spread there, we'll call that beta, so there's beta, there's another beta, and the spread subtended by this one and the diameter, in other words, sort of halfway, beta, we'll call that alpha. So there's alpha, there's alpha. Now, I remind you that when you compose a spread of beta with a spread of beta, you don't get a spread of two beta because that's it's not angles we're talking about. You get a spread of four beta times one minus beta. We're using the second spread polynomial there that we discussed last time. So in this situation here, beta beta gives us alpha. So alpha equals four beta one minus beta. And similarly, if you look at this configuration here, you have an, a an alpha there and another alpha there, and together they form a spread of beta. So that means that beta is equal to 4 alpha times 1 minus alpha. The two quantities are appearing symmetrically. And I want to show you how to solve this system of two equations. One solution is rather easy. One solution is when alpha and beta are both equal. In that case, can cancel them and quickly solve that alpha and beta both have to be three quarters corresponding to 60 degrees or 120 degrees. That's not the relevant one for us, so there's another solution that we're going to have to obtain from these two equations. So we take the first equation, alpha equals 4 times beta times 1 minus beta, and we substitute for beta the expression 4 alpha 1 minus alpha. So we get it there and there. We cancel the alphas on both sides, and we take the one that's remaining here to the other side. So we end up with 16 times 1 minus alpha times 1 minus 4 alpha plus 4 alpha squared minus 1. Now we expand this out, get a cubic expression in alpha, there it is right there. And we want to find the zeros of that expression. Fortunately, we already have noticed that alpha equals 3 quarters is a root, telling us that 3 minus 4 alpha is a factor of this. So once we know that's a factor, then it's not hard to find the other quadratic factor. It's 16 alpha squared minus 20 alpha plus 5. And this equal to 0 has two solutions that we get by the quadratic equation. And here where they are. Alpha is 5 minus root 5 on 8. That's one of the solutions. It's roughly 0.345. And the other is beta equals 5 plus root 5 on 8, approximately that. And what we've really stumbled upon is the fifth spread polynomial, 
which is in fact this one here, has exactly that same factor. The fifth spread polynomial looks like this, and its two zeros, alpha and beta, are marked there. Alpha and beta have the property that their sum is 5 quarters and that their product is 5 sixteenths. These two numbers are the rational analogs of the golden ratio, and they're crucial in understanding the pentagon and fivefold symmetry. I'll leave it to you as an exercise to have a look at the pentagon again, and just to convince yourself that, well, that's alpha, that's alpha, that's beta, that spread is beta, that thing there is alpha, that's 1 minus alpha. And you can demonstrate this crucial thing, that the quadrants between A and B, divided by the quadrants from B to E, is alpha divided by beta. So this alpha to beta establishes the basic relation between the side of a pentagon and one of its diagonals. The numbers alpha and beta are also related to classical trigonometric formulas involving 72 degrees and 36 degrees. If you take 1 minus alpha, then it turns out that it's exactly the square of 1 plus root 5 over 4. Since alpha is the square of the sine of the corresponding angle, 1 minus alpha will be the square of the cosine of the corresponding angle, 36 degrees. So this tells us that the cosine of 36 degrees is 1 plus root 5 on 4. Similarly, 1 minus beta turns out to be this one, exactly the same thing with a minus 1 there instead. And that tells us that cosine of 72 degrees has that expression. So that's just a little bit that we can add on to knowing cosine 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 45 degrees. However, if you look for the sine of 36 or the sine of 72, it gets more complicated because it turns out that the square roots of alpha and beta do not have such nice expressions. You need to consider square roots inside square roots. It's a little bit of an embarrassing aspect to any detailed study of fivefold symmetry. With rational trigonometry, we get by just by using alpha and beta. Those are the fundamental things. Everything is expressed in terms of those. Let's have a look at our pentagon again, and this time I've drawn in, in the interior the pentagram. These spreads here are all alpha. You can see that because the circle going through those points has equal chords here, and so they subtend equal spreads. In the interior here we see another regular uh, pentagon with also spreads of beta. And here in red is a very interesting shape that you see repeated in a number of other places called a flat triangle, and here you can see that it has spreads of alpha, alpha, and beta. Over here is another kind of popular triangle called the sharp shape, and it has one spread of alpha and two spreads of beta. I'll leave it to you to see that, that both of these can in fact be decomposed into smaller sharps and flats. Here's yet another look at the same configuration where I've now focused on something slightly different. This time, a parallelogram, that one right there. These two sides are parallel, so are those. And in fact, since this quadrant is equal to that quadrant, this is a rhombus. Because it's a rhombus, any point on this diagonal will be equal quadrants to these two vertices. So in particular, this point here is, has that quadrant equal to that quadrant. This little shape here, called a dart, it has spreads of beta, alpha, alpha, and alpha. And this in green here, this shape called a kite, has spreads of beta, 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 and alpha. These shapes were discovered and used by Penrose in creating his Penrose tiles, which are a lovely aspect of fivefold symmetry, and also appear in quasi-crystals. Might say a little bit more about that at some future date. In my next video, I'm going to talk about more applications of rational trigonometry to surveying. I hope you'll join me. I'm Norman Wahlberger. Thanks for listening.